Welcome back to part 4 of the Mari tour. Now we're going to be looking at the shader network in Mari. First of all, what we need to do is get ourselves a new shader. And within this, we need to buy the base diffuse a color channel. So we have the original color that we made. And we can change the various parameters and settings just to make this look how we actually want it to. Now we've done this, what we need to do now is actually add another whole shader to this one. So we're actually adding more and more layers to our shader. We can select from these different ones. The minute we're going to pick a bump, what we need to do here is actually pick on the actual disk broad. Once we do this, we can actually increase the level of bump going in and out of this actual image. And we can do the inverted if we want it to go in or out. So look at this angle, and we change the level of actual bump going through. We can make it look like the rust is actually popping off the surface. Let's get a little bit too much, just tight down just a little bit. Okay, right to the level we want. There we go, that should do. Nice rough texture. What we need to do now is we can attach any more of these. We need to just spec them up. And we can click on any of these actual new shaders and it gives a small description at the bottom of what they do. Now we need to pick ourselves a specular. So let me give it an actual colour. We get a specular pass and a specular pass again. What we can do with this one actually we need to turn our actual specular at the top up. All the way just to get a bit more of a glint in this one. What we can do is turn our original specular passes down. Because we don't want this actual object to be too shiny because it's all rusty and it doesn't really have that much of a shine onto it. So we have to think realistic on how this actual shader will actually work on this. We turn this down just a little bit and we apply a different settings to this. You can actually see that there's a tiny glint to this one where we actually made it happen. So we don't want too much spec to actually work on this one. What we also need to do now is apply a mass diffuse to this. So we made our actual mask a dirt color and we made our dirt mask. So we need to apply this as the dirt color and the dirt mask. Now initially it'll come through as inverted, so we need to invert it back. So now you can see how our dirt mask works. And we can turn this up and down to see exactly how much of the actual dirt wants to come through on this one. So the rust is coming through as well as the actual image we actually painted into the mask itself and the dirt we've actually projected onto the actual anvil. So now we've done this, what we need to apply another bump map to this. And we actually pick on our disp fine. For this tiny little scratch that we made in the actual surface. I'm just going to turn them up just a little bit so we can see them. Invert them up again. This is just showing this wear and tear on the actual anvil. What we can also do within this once we actually made our shade, is actually pick them up and drop them wherever we want so we can relayer them in the actual shader itself. So if we've made one, we don't think it looks just right, we can pick them up and drop them wherever we please. I mean, our specules on top. I've got this, we can actually see it looks kind of right, so this is what we've done to combine them. If we go to the lighting tab now, we can change the lighting of this actual model as well. We can hit the R button and we can reset the actual position of this on the actual globe itself. So if we just pull on the light sections that we have over here, we can actually relight this entire object from the way we actually see. What we can also do is change the actual type of light over here, so we can make a red light if you wanted to. Make sure the actual specular will bounce off red. We can make sure the diffuse will pass off red as well. So we can change pretty much every parameter of the light that we need to, just to relight this entire object. Let's get the yellow light in there, a bit of a grainy edge to it. So you can see what we can do here. We can change everything. Just relight this to see how the actual specular passes and the bump pass actually work when you apply different directions of light to this actual object. You can see the actual where in turn on top of this actually showing through a lot more now depending on where we place the light. So it's a nice way of actually judging how the model would look when we actually take the textures back into our 3D program or relighting software. So I'm just going to hit R in this. And I'll actually reset all the values back to default. So there we go. We've done quite a good job actually texturing this angle itself by making different passes that we made ourselves. 
what we can do once we've done this is actually export them from the actual channel setups. So we can export the UV map with the actual textures on here. Simply click export and we actually assign destination to this one. We can click all the channels or just the modified ones. If we've actually painted specific patches on the UV layer, we can actually export them out individually. So now we've done this, we can see we actually bring them in again. So once we've made ourselves our actual channels and exported them, we can actually bring them back into different models and reuse them. So we've explored all the tools here and the UV mode, the split view as well, and the buffer channels. I pretty much got ourselves started on our round trip of actual Mari. So after watching this, you should be able to actually start your own projects and actually start texturing right away. But here we have the actual close tab, the save tab, and everything. So once we've actually done this, what we can do is actually archive this tool. Now, archiving is actually a way of saving out different various versions of our actual model. And once we've done this, we can actually archive our tool away and archive our actual whole model away. And once we've done this, it will take all the path of all the actual text we've used, everything from the actual image manager, the brushes, the actual lighting set we have, and actually save this away. And this is a way of actually passing models between artists. So instead of actually saving them individually in here, we archive the tool out. So once it finishes archiving from our menu, So once I've actually finished archiving, and which is 100% to this, we've actually saved out all the different textures that we used into one file, an MRA file, a Mari archive. So we can, we can open this as another artist or ourselves again once we've done this, and import this into the system. And in here, we can actually find everything that we've used to actually create the original model. So if you wanted to pass this on to another artist, he can have all the brushes that we've made and the actual all the textures and images that we've used in our image manager and all of these actually saved out from their paths into this one location so there's no need to go chasing different assets and if you sometimes find different programs that assets are missing it becomes a real chore to actually find and locate them again with Mari it saves everything out to one location what we can also do with this one if you actually want to share brushes and different palettes and shelves with other artists we can do this the same way by simply exporting them and actually saving the shelves out once we've done this, we can actually import our shelf from different ways and different brushes. So if you have car brushes, model brushes, and basically organic and inorganic brushes, you can actually bring them at your shelves back in and share them with other artists. So now we've covered pretty much everything we need to know to actually get started in Mari and actually start texturing away. What we also have here is actually our Mari community page. And you can actually log on to this and uh, attach for different information files and see what the Kimari community is actually doing at this point in time. Thank you for watching the Mori tour.